host, Big Shoot It, and this is the Lay Bloomer Podcast. We're going to let it ride a little bit, and we're going to get into it. partners in the neighborhood, uh, how they feel about it, going through the comments, uh, you know, we've been doing everything, make sure y'all share this, make sure y'all like it, make sure y'all subscribe, you know, uh, I'm over a thousand subscribers, and that's I heard, you gotta just come with a different little lingo, you gotta, you gotta have YouTube talk, so I'm gonna try to do my best, I'm getting better, I'm trying to get better at it, you know what I'm saying, I'm gonna get better at it, so, it's all good though. You know what I'm saying? Everything is all good. Everything is all good. So here it is. We're gonna get into this story. And basically what I be talking about with this shit is the origin, the foundation, how it started. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and how it started, man, right? like a lot of this shit trickle down. But some way, somehow, uh, like let, let, let's say, like I said, a lot of this shit, um, yeah, it's clicks and clicks and clicks. A lot of this shit is 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 like gang based too, though. You see what I'm saying? And just think about, okay, I'm in my thirties, so I never really had an issue with these niggas. But you know what I'm saying? It, not me per se, but you know, big picture wise, yeah. All right. So let's say if 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 it been an issue with these guys, the mob and these guys and Okay, everybody in their 30s. Then you got niggas that come behind us that's in their late 20s, early 30s. You know what I'm saying? And um, they started beefing with these niggas from high school. Like, all of the beef started with some high school shit. And it shook it down and said, okay, niggas done graduated high school. And niggas still falling out. All right? So, that's two generations. And you got the last generation of the early 20 niggas who the same shit. Niggas going to the same high school and falling out. Same, this hood, this neighborhood is falling out with some of these same gang members from their same school, which fairly, basically, you know what I'm saying? Falling out with niggas for fairly. So, okay. All right. So here it is. I remember my back in the day in that neighborhood, we got this field. It's a that dead smack in the middle of the field. So niggas used to meet up in the middle of the field and get one on ones and shit though. You know what I'm talking about? Meet up in the middle of the field, get one on ones and this uh settle their differences. Remember I told y'all with Lil L- Ricky Hunt. When a nigga when they came to the neighborhood looking for Lil Ricky Hunt, they was cutting through the field and we was in front of the field. And Lil Ricky still hey, I'm Lil Ricky Hunt, bro. Okay. Wham. They didn't actually fight at the field, but, you know, we was by the field. Okay, so even when I was in prison, I remember looking at shit on Facebook. Niggas from Walker Home, remember I told y'all there always been some little shit between my neighborhood and Walker Home, even though they supposed to be like this. 
But um, it always been some little issues. So niggas used to come to the neighborhood and duke it out in the field. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so here it is. This is one of the prime examples where some high school shit done spewed into some after school shit, right? All right. And this particular group right here, okay, we're going to say these guys is, they, these, are, these are early 30 guys. So this is the guys that's right up under them. Me, the star, you know what I'm saying? In our neighborhood. These are not walking home guys. These are in our neighborhood. All right. And, okay, the reason I say that, okay, I was talking to, um, okay, hold on. The fight done spewed into our neighborhood, just like it always do. So, like I said, these are the guys that's up under us. So, the reason I was saying, like, the valet out hood is, like, one of them hoods that's a young mob neighborhood. It's only two hoods in Memphis, period. I don't give a fuck what they really say. Unless you want to say Cambridge back then, niggas used to pull up on Cambridge, too. But it's only two hoods in Memphis that's for sure, for sure. That niggas know if young mob. Like, let's say if you jumped off the porch at 10, 11, 12 years old, you got niggas that's older than you that's already mob like that. And you decide when you become a teen to not pushing it. Not saying it's good, not saying it's good at all. Though. You just, I'm just speaking on the dynamics of how it used to be. So it was kind of like brick, like established like that, like shit, this a young mom neighborhood. So if you come up in this motherfucker back then, it wasn't no rules to you joining the mob in our neighborhood because this hood is a young mob neighborhood given the history of it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, what's going on, man? I just got a few questions I want to ask you, man. Hey, hey, how long have you been a uh, young mob, bro? Nah, shit, you said like 06, 07. 06, 07. And uh, what neighborhood you out of? You out, I mean, what neighborhood you out of? My Nehemiah. Hey, let me ask you this question, too. If you would have to say, if it was two neighborhoods in in memphis that you know just from your history it seemed like you've been around a long time too what how old are you first of all how old are you like 29 29 okay you've been around since you were 29 okay so if just from your history what neighborhoods in memphis was just as long as you know of have just been like young mob neighborhoods where you know where you know where i can go over here it's gonna be some young mob niggas i can go over here it's gonna be some young mob niggas for sure for sure Nehemiah Walker home. Nehemiah Walker home. And, okay, you said you've been around since 06, 07 in the, in the Nehemiah, right? So, when you first moved over there, what was it like? What was the gang? Was it was it a, a young mob neighborhood first off, or was it uh, more so of a gang neighborhood? It was a gang neighborhood. Then it was, it was a gang neighborhood, and it was mobbing though so it wasn't no okay when you said when i say a gang neighborhood was it like everybody was in the neighborhood was on the same accord or was it like people beefing in the neighborhood or was it just everybody was the same gang and everybody was friends and partners my everybody was the same gang in the neighborhood everybody was friends and partners so it wasn't no beef in the neighborhood when you was growing up between the neighborhood everybody in the neighborhood was either Either young mob or any gang or young mob and the gang, right? Yeah. Okay then, okay then. My last question, man. Um this clip is about basically is 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 origin of the mob and it's basically about just I title it like you you the first person to really get shot in the neighborhood. And like really I know the backspin or you know, like it really ain't had shit to do with you. But you got shot just from being a mobster and being in the young mob neighborhood and basically shit, just shit that got to do with beef that they had nothing to do with you because it's a mob neighborhood. So I just want to know, bro, what was you doing? What was you in? And what was you thinking when you got shot, man? And we're going to leave it like that. My, I got shot in the mob. Gee, I was a young nigga. I was on my way to the crib. And, and did you see, did you see the person, I mean, did you see it happening? What was you doing? Like, all right, go like this. You know, you know, the field, the field in the, mid, in the middle of Nehemiah. 
Yeah, the, the, the famous field. Okay. I'm walking through the field. Okay. Shit. A cop pulled up right there, right there by the light, little street light. Mother just said something. You know, I turned around and that was it. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. That's crazy, bro. It's, it, it, that shit just goes to show you, man. You know how, how, like I was saying, like this shit, this, this, this old situations. Even like it was even before you, and this shit just led into, and it's still going on. And I'm just trying to let the people know, like this shit just. It's just deep. It's deeply enrooted. And, man, you ain't even really got to be doing that. They just go for the city. You ain't even really got to be doing a whole lot in this city, man. You could be getting up and just be minding your own business. Man, shit have happen, though. You know what I'm saying? Shit have happen for no reason. Mm-hmm. For real, for real. But I appreciate you, bro, uh, giving me a little minute of your time. And I'm going to get back with you uh, a little later. I just really want to, man, want you to. Chop it up with me and let me know how you felt about this shit and uh, what was going on at that time, bro. Oh, yeah, man. Shit, you know. Shit, I'm mobbing, though. You jumped off the porch at 10, 11, 12 years old. You got niggas that's older than you that's already mobbed like that. And you decide when you become a teen to not pushing it. Not saying it's good, not saying it's good at all. Though. You just, I'm just speaking on the dynamics of how it used to be. So it was kind of like brick, like established like that, like shit. This is your mom neighborhood. So if you come up in this motherfucker back then, it wasn't no rules to you joining the mob in our neighborhood because this hood is a young mob neighborhood given the history of it. You see what I'm saying? So, okay. So, and that's going to be for who I'm speaking on. So, um, like I said, this is the Crippin' Blood era, though. This is pre-Young Mob, for real, for real. This is, no, 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 I'm tripping, I'm tripping. This is not pre-Young Mob. This is still just Crippin' Blood shit, though. It's Crippin' Blood shit, but it's, it's Crippin' Blood, but it's masked by, you know, the click shit. Okay, so this particular day I come on, I come out the door, and I see my homeboy, Freddie G., getting into it. He got a one-on-one going on with a nigga who got a little size on him. And my homeboy, Lil Rico, he got a one-on-one going on with this guy named M. We gonna call him M. <laughs> we ain't gonna say names no more, man. I don't. This is entertainment purposes. Uh, we gonna say allegedly. We gonna say allegedly. I'm gonna start saying allegedly, even though I was there on the scene. Yeah, that, uh, allegedly, even though I was there on the scene. This is for entertainment purposes. All right. So, uh, they get to fighting, you know, two round fight. Look, M get M get a good one in. Larico get a good one in. His brothers and sisters and them out there, they break it up. All right, it's over with, right? Fight is over with. Everybody go home. Everybody go back to their respected uh living quarters. Okay then. So here it is. Everybody go back to their respected living quarters. All right. Couple of days later. Really? Okay, we got a couple of days later. Okay, this is where the uh young mob, the gang banging, and just this neighborhood, how I'm trying how to tell you, like this is a foundation. Alright, got a homeboy named Freddie G. He's called Fred, aka Max Scrappy, man. Freddie G was one of them little dudes where he grew up in the neighborhood, like he was just real promising, man. Like like, just far, far as on the bullshit, though. Like, it's, he was loved and loved by his family, though. You know what I'm saying? He used to keep him fresh, woo-woo, and all of that. But when it came to street activities, though, like, he was just little, one of them little young niggas who was going to fight. He was just a, a, a TTG. He was trying to go. So he was one of them little dudes in our neighborhood who we kind of, like, he was our little pride and joy, Max Scrappy. Yeah, we fuck him. So, he was blood at an early age, too, though. But he was always stamped, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, as, as a real little young nigga. So, he had his own little young nigga group. That's how much influence he had. He had young niggas that follow up behind him. You know, his own little way. So, a lot of the young niggas in our neighborhood actually started out following little Fred because he had the juice as a young nigga. 
So here it is. LaFred used to do so much shit out here in the streets, though, as Max Scrappy. You know what I'm saying? Because he was off the porch. So, okay, they had these little one-on-ones. And remember, I say our neighborhood is a young mob neighborhood. So you could be that, that kid who really not into nothing, a good kid, but but you stay in the neighborhood and you stay around Max Scrappies and and but because they in your age group, you stay around Max Scrappies and these guys are your friends. And okay, you and Max Scrappy could be the same skin complexion. Dark as the shadow and young, low haircut. So okay, here we go. All right, I got this part of the name done, man. Look, Don, good guy. I tried to bring him on. He said that we chopped it up about a lot of this uh, information, and he was supposed to call me back so that I could, you could hear his his voice talking, and then I was going to go into it. But I don't know what happened, you know what I'm saying? Maybe somebody done talked him out of it or whatever, but okay, here we go. So, Lil Don, he don't bother nobody. He really just, he, um... Uh, he guilty by association. He in a young mob neighborhood. You see what I'm saying? So here we go. I was under the impression that he was walking to the store or walking over a little star house. But he said he was walking home. He was right there by the field. So the info I had got yesterday, and plus I, I, I remember hearing this from a long time ago, but I haven't been speaking to nobody about any of this shit, though. So now I'm talking to some of my little partners in the neighborhood, and they kind of telling me shit and actually I had to square them up on still the origin and they was like well maybe truth got this wrong now nah, truth ain't got shit wrong when I was the mob y'all guys was still you know one around one in this shit so how could y'all know more about me and that's why I played the Duke clip on on Wicked like not trying to change or shatter no, no history but the Duke clip on Wicked when Wicked asked him young mob walk home uh, that where it started, it. and his response was, um, "You can say that. That's not a. You can say that's where it jumped off. It. That's not a definite answer. That's not a. Yeah, that's where it is because it's a little more backspin to it. And I'm not challenging nobody. I'm just speaking up. I'm just speaking on what I feel like I know. You know what I'm saying? That's why." Our neighborhood been ran like it is. That's why it always been like that. That's why in the beginning, uh, for them first six, seven, eight years, it was so much, so much going on over there. You know, shit, Duke stayed in our neighborhood. So if Duke stayed in our neighborhood and it was a whole lot of mob business going on in our neighborhood and everything that came behind it was a men star over here in the neighborhood and we mob, how is it? You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to make it make sense. But anyway, so. It's one of them days where my little Don said he was walking to the house. They mistaken little Don for Fred. So, and this go back from people hollering at some people that actually know them guys or, and know females that know them. So, she done asked them what happened. And you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's done been all type of little back and forth shit about this little incident, too, right? So anyway, they shoot Don. Don say he jump in the bushes. He get himself up. He, uh, I think, um, he get himself up. And I don't know if he knocked on that door or they end up seeing it. But he he goes he goes to Little Rico house and uh, my partner Big Jasmine and his sister lay him down flat. You know what I'm talking about? A system. So. All right, man, that shit is weird about me. Okay, I'm a little older than Don, like three, four, about four, five years old. Right? older than Don. So, I'm a little old, maybe five. I'm a little older. It ain't sitting well with me, though, because I'm here it is. I know Lil Don is really like one of the little monsters that he, who, the same time, come a point where you gotta, you gotta stand on business. But here it is, he just was jumping out the pool. He just really coming outside and shit like this. So when you hear about somebody like him getting shot, you be like, damn, bro, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. And to this day, I want to say, excuse me, to this day, I want to say my uh, my partner, he actually had like little medical issues from that. You know what I'm saying? He, so, man, y'all just, he need a prayer warrior. At the same time, man, he's still here, still a good spirit, still, you know. 
But you know, it just done affected him in certain little ways. So I'm like, damn, man, I ain't feeling this shit at all, bro. So I'm in my baby mama car, and he concurred that this shit happened in 2009. So prison in 2010, though. You know what I'm saying? So it was right before uh, prison. I went to prison in 2010, but uh, okay, so I'm like, God, damn, I don't know. Rad. Just really rad through the through that hood. And uh trying to see what's going on. I don't forget who I was with, but I remember uh having one of my partners. I ain't gonna say they name because I don't know who which which partner it was for sure, for sure. So I'm nigga be like, man, truth I am. So anyway. And they was like, truth, you know, that's them young. I kinda know who it was, you know what I'm saying, but I ain't gonna say it because I don't know for sure, for sure. But uh, he's like, truth, that's them young niggas beat, though, bro. You know what I'm saying? It don't make no 